welcome to Vacation Station, hosted by Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazines.com. Hey, everybody, welcome to Big Blend Radio's Vacation Station Travel Show. We love to chat with Glenn Burrows every fourth Saturday. And, you know, we do other shows with him, too. Glenn is a family history expert. He's a tour guide and owner of Norfolk Tours in England. And today he's joining us to talk about youth travel in England, especially college student age. I mean, what happens when you graduate high school? Of course, in this country, in the States, we look at um, spring break and that gets a little crazy. And mm -hmm. I think we're kind of changing out to doing things that are still fun. Um, you want to go if, if you're going over to college in England, you're going to want to know about the area and the family's mm -hmm. going to want to know. So Glenn is your dude. Uh, so go to norfolk-tours.co.uk. You can read his article about it up on blendradioandtv.com now. So welcome back, Glenn. How are Not you? We're very good here. Thanks. Yeah, all, all okay. good in here. A bit good. wet, but all all right. Hey, but good. that means you're going to have a beautiful spring, right? Well, everything is lovely and green at the moment, so that's always nice. good. That's nice. nice. That's really nice. Mm. You know, the youth travel, I love your article because it just kind of brought us back to all these things of, you know, that we it just, I, we always hear about, you know, but kids can get out there and experience it now um, instead of doing the crazy parties. And, you know, sometimes, you know, when I was graduating high school, that was what people were doing before the college. They'd go on these big backpacking trips and you travel at that age is, I think, part of setting up who you are as an individual oh, for sure don't yeah. you think I mean when I was at school it had been about 1974 so I'd have been 15 um we went on a Mediterranean cruise and you know I wow. still remember that like it was yesterday because mm -hmm. it was it was so amazing to go to places like uh Vesuvius and Pompeii and wow. to go to to go to places like um, where did we went to um, to Venice, you know, to, mm. to go to those places and to experience them when you're a teenager, really does set you up for the the love of travel, you know. Mm -hmm. Even again, when I was at when I was at school, we had um, a, a French exchange system going, so that our we had uh, pen friends in France. This was in the days when you still wrote letters, you know, so we had a French pen friend. And then every Easter, we went over to France as a group. And then in the July, the French students would come over to Norfolk. And oh. I've known I've known Patrick, my French pen friend, since I was 12. And we're still very much in contact. Wow, he's, it's amazing. He's still, he still comes over here. I still go over there. His daughter and my daughter are the same age. They're oh, both nice. children. You know, when when we lost my dad uh, in October, you know, Patrick mm. was one of the first people I told because Patrick is part of my family. You mm. know, he's like my brother. When I got married, he was my best man. You know. Oh wow! Well, but these wow. these things, the, you know, from teenage to to adulthood they just make your world so much more important because, you know, I I love that part of France. He lives in the Loire Valley in Orléans, where Joan of Arc came from. You know, that's that's my second home, you know. Huh. Wow, so, so that's amazing, because you even worked in, in France for a while, didn't you? Yeah, well, that was why I went to work in France, because I thought I love France, so I'll go and work in France. So that's why <laughs> I went and traveled to France. But it it is the whole point about traveling when you're young, because, you know, by the time you get married and have children, you then put your your own life on hold for 20 mm -hmm. years. You know, so yeah. you, you want to travel when you're anything sort of 16 to, to 20 is a really good time to travel. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, we all have to realize that we need to be safe. Mm -hmm. you know, and that that is one of the most important things i mean when i arrived you just mentioned going to work in france i went to france uh when i was 19 and i arrived in paris 
in the in the station waiting for my connection to to Tour, which is in the Loire Valley. And this bloke came up to me and obviously could see I was English. And, and he said, oh, you're obviously waiting for a train. Um, I can give you some accommodation for tonight. I said, that's all right, thanks. I'm waiting for a train. I didn't realize that I was in danger there. You know, oh, I was traveling wow. on my own. And this strange mm. bloke offered me a bed for the night, you know. Ooh, I, was Glenn. A, <laughs> I was a country <laughs> bumpkin, you know. I didn't understand <laughs> the danger. But I, I think I mm. think now if we can help young people to travel safely all over the world, that'd be great. You know, well, these I think, are the sort of things yeah. that we can do. And the, and the education of it all is very important. I think, oh, um, exactly. it, it, you know, the, the big spring break thing here, I mean, we've done shows on it and it's still actually one of the top listened show that we ever did was an interview mm. about a documentary of what happens at spring break. And we're talking about, mm. I mean, because and also where your your mind is still developing at that age. And so, yeah. you know, if you're very young and so, and your hormones are there. So, you know, everybody's kind of, it, it becomes a very um, horrific thing for women, uh, girls becoming women who are, you know, you're women at that, at that age, but um, it becomes a big thing where it's all about sex and um, booze and drugs mm -hmm. and that is not wild. safe and going really wild and it's mm -hmm. uh, very degrading to women and mm -hmm. women get themselves in things where it's like, it's almost like a contest. Rape mm -hmm. does occur. Um, it is a, it is, so I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer on a party. I think you should have your party, but there's a line and I think we are, it, there's enough now to show that it's not a healthy way to celebrate. And now the way travel, I think it, like England, as we've been saying over the last couple of shows, it's very affordable for us Americans and people in other parts of the world to travel mm -hmm. to England right now. Yes. And so I think for you, this is a good time to go over, whether it's a college group. Um, we knew college students in this country. We, we met them at a grape stomp in Julian, in, uh -huh. up in the mountains where we used to live in California. Mm -hmm. We all got in the, the grape stomping tank at a winery together. Yeah. And some <laughs> lady got in and dropped oh, her glass so funny. in the grapes. And it was broken and she she was just all oh i didn't want this and just dropped it dropped it and we She's all looked really... at her and we pelted her with grapes because she had white she was dressed she was dressed all in white and, and she was so full of herself looked... and we and these yeah. were all irish students and we all so looked all at each sudden, other and that was and it said, let's get her let's get her and we did and we hung out together all day all night they followed us to our house in it we weren't in living in julian at, at that point we were in uh, Vista, California, so about an hour, hour and a half away, mm -hmm. down the mountains, with their little rental car, followed us. Then I took them out to meet friends of mine at the beach. Then the next Venice day, we beach. took them to Venice Beach, California, mm -hmm. which is crazy. It's drum circles and hippies and yeah, music. That's and awesome. They said, they said to us, they come over every single year, this group of friends come over to the States every I think it was summer because it was the end of August early September they come over and they're all uh, students uh, veterinary science students mm -hmm. and they just come over and they have a good time but they said that because they hung out with us and we took them places there was a best time out of doing this three to four years now yeah. and that to me proves it because there are places I'm like no no you don't want to go stay on this side of town you know what I mean you you, you go here exactly and and mm -hmm. it was it was this connection. And I think that's something what's cool about your style of tours is that you have that personal connection where it, it becomes fun. You're allowing people to do what they want to do. I mean, th yeah. this group of, of young students were, they, they know they didn't want to do something they didn't want to do because it's a uh, budget of time, a budget of money, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's quite funny. You mentioned Julian. I've got a mate of mine who, who actually owns a property in Julian. Um, oh, wow. And that used to, his house used to belong to one of the Disney people. Anyway, going off topic there. Oh, that's a, um, yeah, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, you know that everyone is a good... Julian. Yeah. Right, anyway, anyway <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what you were saying about young people and, and the, the dangers of traveling. I mean, as I said, you know, I was, I was only a 19-year-old from a, 
from the middle of the countryside. So I didn't realize the danger I was in, in the middle of Paris, you know, in the seventies. But the sort of thing that, that I think is important is that for students to travel, to know that they're safe and mm -hmm. for their parents to know that they're safe as well. I mean, I had a, I had a lady over, um, she wanted her, her daughter was coming over to study in Norwich University and she brought her over with a couple of friends to drop them off. Um, but she just wanted to get an introduction to the area. Uh, and that's what we did. We had a day riding around the countryside, um, showing her different areas in Norfolk and sort of talking about life because mm. it's important when you come abroad for the first time to know what life is like, where you are, where to go, where not to go, what to do, what to ask for, you know. So the the, the sort of things I've put together for for this article are a couple of examples about what what I could do for a for a group of students. Mm. But but again, you know, the nice thing about what I do is that if there was just one student coming over who wanted to get an introduction to the area where they were living and they wanted to have somebody they could trust, then, you know, I could do that for them. Mm. You know, I always I mean, talking about students and young people. I mean, I, I had one lady over who was I think she was about 85 or 88, something like that, from Tasmania. And her daughter had arranged for her mum to come over and do some family history. And I, I spoke to a, this woman in in um, in Tasmania and, and she said, you know, she was trusting me with her mum. And she said, I, you know, I want to make sure that you're the right person for my mum and that I can trust you. And so we had a quite a nice little conversation, you know, but that's what what she needed. Mm -hmm. And at the other end of the the generations, that's also what you need when you've got, I don't know, an 18 year old who's going to travel mm -hmm. for the first time. You need to have someone you can trust and, mm -hmm. you know, you can trust me. <laughs> Which... <laughs> well, yeah. Trust me. Well, no. Trust Glenn. <laughs> yeah, but 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 that's the thing, you know. And and listen, everyone. Glenn has been on our show for years, uh, and and so oh. you can listen to him communicate about England, you know, till the cows come home, and and really hear and understand what he's saying about that, and and trusting him. Um, I think what what's also really important is when you go to university or college for the first time and you're in a different country, a good, dear mm -hmm. friend of ours, his daughter ended up in Wales. And I'm like, wow, OK, so like, you know, not going to college here. She went for some specific reason. And you were talking about college universities in, in England, some of the most historic ones mm -hmm. in the world. And yeah. um, so when you go over. You want to know where to shop, like even how to even use the money. I know that sounds ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. But so you're not only are sometimes this is the first time you've left home, but now you're flying the coop into a different country and you have to study. And you know, the world is in, like it's a whole new chapter of your life and a big one. So I think that's you know, I know students that come here, they don't, especially from a different country, like the food is different. I know you your food mm -hmm. is different. Yes. I mean, it's similar, but it's different. Absolutely. I mean, I think, they should I all mean, buy Marmite. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think the, the important thing is for parents to know that there is somebody on the ground who they, yeah. they can sort of Absolutely. leave their children under the wing, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. You know, it, I think it's important, even if, even if they don't use that service at least they can know that there are people there who who are are happy to help you know mm -hmm. and i think i think that 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 could be you know a service that people need you know because when when our daughter was studying in nottingham uh, nottingham is sort of about where the a is in birmingham just above my head so you can mm -hmm. see that that's in the midlands and I'm right over where the red dot is. Um, so it's quite a distance away. It's about two and a half hours of travel. So, you know, if my daughter was unwell in Nottingham University, I could get to see her within two and a half hours. 
But if you're in America and your daughter's or your son is unwell, you know, you need somebody to contact who mm. you can trust. You know, that sort of thing is, is mm. again, what I offered to this lady for her daughter. And there was another gentleman, I said, because you know, his son came and studied in Cambridge. And I said, you know, if he needs to just get away for the weekend and want to have some home cooking, he's more than welcome to come and, and oh, have wow. some home cooking with us. You know? Oh, Diane Scones. Oh. Exactly. Scones. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, neither of the students used that. But at least, you know, that's available. There's you a know? peace of mind. Home from home, you know, it's what, what you need sometimes. Mm -hmm. Well, and ask it and having someone to ask advice, you know, yeah. like if you suddenly, for whatever reason, you needed um, to to go to a doctor, the, who do you choose? It's yeah. good to be able to know someone to ask and get a recommendation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and you know, that sort of thing is, is a possibility. But, but the other thing, that, which is what I sort of wrote the article about, was if um, a university or a college uh, lecturer or professor is thinking about putting together a study trip to England, then that's the sort of thing I could really help with because I could mm. do everything at this end for them. You know, they could say to me, we want to do a study trip on, I don't know, medieval church mm -hmm. architecture. Um, I could easily do that, obviously. But likewise, if they want to do a geography field trip and study river formations, then we could do that. And obviously being here, I know areas to mm. go to, you know. Mm -hmm. And obviously the, one of the other examples I used was was writing, you know, because England has Shakespeare, um, you know. Mm. So, But we have lots of other things as well, you know. We, mm. it, it's not just Shakespeare, you know. We've got loads of other literary experts, you know. So it's it's something that I can help with, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it's it's basically like we always say is having somebody on the ground. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, I know I know a lady who um, was the head of booking the trips for college students in different colleges. Right, and uh, that was her thing, and and she would have to work with people overseas yeah. to really get that, and and needed someone not just not just the specific hotel, you know. So it was like she needed someone that could help on that side with the whole thing going, okay, well, I've got, you know, 20 screaming girls now, <laughs> you know, coming over, <laughs> you know, that yeah. want to go and do this and that. And, and it's not, you know, it's, it's having, like you're saying, having that person on the other side, but they were really able to, you know, help her. Like, I don't know any travel advisor, event group meeting, all those planners, they all need like a, their right hand over in the place that, you know, Yes, I, I think that that is so important because I mean when we came when we went to Canada a few years ago, well we've been twice now. Um, it was so handy to have my cousins in Canada who were arranging all our stuff for us because they oh. knew where to go, what to do, who to see, who not to right. see. You know, they mm -hmm. were doing everything in Canada. You know, and likewise when they came over to England we arranged everything mm -hmm. in England. So they just arrived at the airport and, and we'd sorted everything out. But that is so much easier and so much better yeah. to mm. have somebody on the ground in the country who knows all of the, the ways of doing stuff in that country. And also they know the places to go. You know, if, mm -hmm. if, if yeah. say, for instance, you wanted to come here and, and, and study Shakespeare, then obviously you've got to go to Stratford-upon-Avon. Um, but is it common knowledge in America, for instance, that there is a replica of the Globe Theatre in London that has has been rebuilt? You know, they, they built oh. a Shakespearean theatre, a 16th century timber and thatched building Whoa. in the middle wow. of London. Look it up. It's called, wow. it's called the Globe. It is a replica of Shakespeare's theatre in London. And it's not wow. that well known, probably amongst everybody. But that's wow. the sort of thing that I know of in London because I've heard about it, you know. Mm -hmm. So there are so many examples of that sort of thing. 
that's the thing is like when people are studying something in specific like they they were into veterinary science like the you know friends yeah. we made from ireland uh, so everybody still wants to do something while they're over there that enriches their Fine. studies you know and what they're wanting yeah. to do but yeah. also at that age i know that there's they they want to have their own free time to explore and do that kind mm -hmm. of because you, know, you know like backpacking has always been you know popular so is that cool. something you can work around with people like going hey you know all right glenn we want to do some of these things but we also just want to have our you know because at that age we're we're wild a little you know we want to well, go exploring and get into trouble just a little bit so do you give them I that breath of being able to do so, that that is so important that mm -hmm. you know, first and foremost you're coming to england to learn about England. Secondary, if you can do something while you're in England that you can't do in America, then that's really important to do that. Exactly. So if you're coming over and you're an English student, you know, not an English student, you're an American student who's studying English as a language oh, wow. or English literature or something, you know, come here and have fun and look at London and look at Birmingham and Manchester and or Edinburgh or whatever you want to look at. But add into that a little bit of something that you're studying as well. So, you know, obviously a day trip to Stratford upon Avon. But while you're in London, why not actually go to the Globe Theatre and see a performance of a Shakespearean play in a Shakespearean setting? You know, Absolutely. that sort of thing is something mm -hmm. that you're going to remember for the rest of your life. Absolutely. And it's so important to actually get a hands-on feeling a hands-on experience of something that makes whatever you're studying real mm. you know, if you're studying medieval architecture or if you're studying uh, i don't know uh, geographic rock formations mm -hmm. or something you know actually seeing these things in real life is going to be so much more important than reading about them or looking at them on a mm. website. Right, mm. right. So, you said in your article um, that, you know, well. that the universities and colleges are so old and some of the oldest in the world yes. that their collections are really extensive. And absolutely. So you get to go and actually see the collections, like if it's fossils and things like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for instance, in Cambridge, they have um, the Cambridge University Library, which has not every published book, but most published books, because they are a depository that take in every book that is published. Um, they oh. have they have documentary sources. So they have collections coming out of their ears about so oh. many different subjects. Um, but the individual colleges within Cambridge have their own collections that relate to their uh, alumni, you know, the people who went to their their university college. So, for instance, um, Peps, you know, the, the famous man who wrote his diary, of, you know, in the 17th century, um, his diaries, his original diaries are actually in Cambridge, you know, wow. so you can actually see his writing. Um, That's cool. You know, there mm -hmm. are all of the universities have museums attached with their own subject matter. So if you're studying fossils, there's a museum in Cambridge about fossils. If you're studying, um, I don't know, Egyptology, you can go to a museum that has an absolute stack of Egyptology in it, you know, that sort of stuff. You, if you're interested in botany, the, you know, the Cambridge University um, Gardens has some fantastic Victorian greenhouses with plants from all over the world in because they have mm. specimens of different plants for the students to study you know so mm. things like that are things that you won't necessarily find anywhere else you know obviously mm. with plants you find them in other places but things like pep's diary you're not going to find that anywhere else in the yeah world. that's that's incredible things like that stick with you like in south africa I went to a museum and they had an Egyptian mummy who was lying flat in the uh, oh, it was Pretoria thing. Yeah, it was yeah, in Pretoria. Yeah, yeah. But the toe. bottom part of it was a little um, piece, piece was were missing. And you yeah. could see the mummy's toes. Yes. I, as a kid, I, I that, that was it. I'm that like, was he's good. got a toe. There's a toe. That's it. And so now anytime 
Well, there's a roadside attraction in um, on your way from Arizona through New Mexico, the thing. And it's like yeah, the billboard thing. signs, like, you know, kind of those wacky roadside attractions, yeah. like from Route 66, come to the thing and you pay mm-hmm. so much to go in. And every single person that goes there and oh, says, don't funny. go to the thing, but no matter what, you, you go, want to to go to the thing. The thing. But I, yeah. and I want to go to the thing because they have a mummy in there and I want to see if he's got a toe. That's <laughs> yeah. But the, but seeing the mummy's toe cool stuff. That was so cool. Like, well, like yeah. so they really did have, they did wrap people up and call them mummies. So they, yeah. they really exist. And when you, when you take history and you read about it, you're going to, it's like, oh yeah, okay, if you say so. But when you oh, see yeah. one, then you're like, Whoa, they really Dude. did that. Yeah. Well, that that's yeah. how I felt about all the castles that I went to in England, mm-hmm. Scotland, and Wales. I got, I mean, it, when when you can see mm-hmm. like up at the top of the turrets and then at the top where, you know, how people were using like the, the places to shoot arrows and you could see what the moats were like. Because, you know, I had all the books as, you know, remember the English history mm-hmm. books, even as a kid, open them up and it's like mm-hmm. every king and queen and prince and princess. And I'm like, how many of you are there? There's a lot. It's more than the, the size of England, you know, but there's a lot, you know, through the history. And then going to these castles and seeing, you know, the, the opulence as well, like all the, the jewels and the cloaks. I'm like, That's this amazing. stuff isn't just amazing illustrations in a book, like from way back it's when. It's real. This is real, but in, in the dungeons and, but the moats, like the drawbridges, I mean, that mm-hmm. stuff was insanely amazing real, but it goes beyond a book to me it, you yes. you can't but see that's I mean, when, part of bringing mm-hmm. history and making history alive which well, makes exactly. it believable and once yeah. the, once it's believable you remember it you and might then even the, yeah even watching when movies, you get a list of dates the dates don't really mean anything no, not no. until you're there and not, seeing not it until you see something made in the 1700s or the 1600s yeah. But if you watch a movie and you've seen something like a historical piece or a documentary, a movie Mm. or a documentary, if you've seen a castle and it's got talking about the castle, but you've been there, it heightens the whole movie experience. Oh, yeah. I think I think the main thing that I get from visiting places is the scale, because you cannot you cannot get a scale in a film or on a book or on a website you know, we've got, a, a, you're talking about castles, we've got a, a ruined castle just up the road from me. And it's when you actually walk into the outer bailey and you see the mot, which is the big mound where the castle is standing on top. And you, you think to yourself, or you understand that this was all made by hand. You know, wow. this, this was dug out by hand. Oh by men with wheelbarrows and the soil was piled up and then they built this massive castle on top of this mound you know until you wow. actually stand there and get the scale you've mm. got no no perception of how big some of these things are it's, it's like i mean i haven't been to the grand canyon but until no doubt until you stand on the side of the Grand Canyon and you look mm-hmm. down and you think wow. and you look down you're like whoa dude exactly. let me tell you whoa. there that's a that's a that's a that's, that's a, a um I, I get vertigo yes and so that being there just <laughs> that's there's there's crazy. a and yet I'm intensely curious so it's a very dangerous combination and so I, I think in my past life something happened I tipped over you know must be that <laughs> champagne over. Sunday there she, she went tipped over <laughs> but but you know, it's um, I mean, you you, there is nothing like being at the Grand Canyon. There is, no. and we've exactly. been to places yeah. similar, but they have their own unique, like the Rift Valley. To me, I'll never forget looking oh. down this giant gorge oh. and seeing yeah. zebras at the bottom mm-hmm. of this gorge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And giraffe and 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 there were little specks. I mean, how did that yeah. happen? You know, and yeah. driving down what they call the escarpment, that at the time I'm sure it's a bigger road now but when i drove down it you're like "Uh oh am i still on the road yes well, I mean, yeah. when, when we went to niagara i mean nothing nothing prepared me for the scale of niagara yeah. falls nothing oh wow yeah you know because mm-hmm. 
because you know you you're never going to have an idea how big it is until you're standing there mm -hmm. you know right. a picture mm -hmm. a picture or a film or even an aerial photograph or nothing prepares you for the sheer yeah. scale of these mm -hmm. things and i think that is what is important when you're doing a field study trip or if you're doing a uh, you know on on site work is to actually mm -hmm. get the feel of it if if you're if you're doing geology, you know, actually see where the rocks come from, how they're formed on the side of a mountain, you know, all of them mm -hmm. sort of things, you can't get an idea of it until you're actually standing Do there. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that, is, that is something that, that field study trips are really good for. But I mm -hmm. think also from, from what we've been saying, I think it's really important for field study trips and for young students trips and things to realize that they're young as well and they need to have a bit of fun so you mm -hmm. know we, we need to work all these things together so you have fun but you also learn mm -hmm. you know it's it's mm -hmm. like when i when i always used to when i was a school governor i used to go in and talk to young children about different things the main thing was to make it interesting and then afterwards, they don't realize that they've been actually in a lesson all day because right. all they're doing is having fun. But they've been learning so many things. We used to go mm -hmm. on field trips where we'd walk into the village and they would be having great fun running about in the fields and looking at this and climbing up that. And But actually, when they come back, they've been doing geography, history, maths, writing. They've been doing all them things, but they were having mm -hmm. fun. And mm -hmm. I think yeah. that... That is the key. I I, no, I, mean, in, I, I would mm -hmm. say go like for students, I think so many of them love hiking and being outdoors. I know that just in the American culture. Yeah. I mean, the outdoors is a big part of a way of life here. And I think if if they had the chance to go like as a field trip on Peddler's Way, I mean, and go walk the Roman roads. Is, it is Peddler's, Peddler's right? Way. Yeah. Pe Peddler's, yeah. not Peddler. Peddler. I always say Peddler. Peddler. Yeah, Pedder's way. Okay. And I just, I just always think pedal down the Roman roads. Um, but mm. if they can actually experience some of that walking. It's part of the walking history of England too. I mean, England, mm -hmm. exactly. but we've England got and so like many. New Zealand's like that too. Huh? We've got so Tramping. many long distance, long distance footpaths. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, is it called you know, tramping? Again. Tramping? In, in, tramping? Is it called tramping? In, or is that just in New Zealand that they say tramping? Um, no, I think that's probably New Zealand. Yeah. But what I'm, what I'm okay. saying is that we've also got the opportunity to to do camping because a lot of these long distance footpaths uh, are interspersed with campsites. So, mm -hmm. you know, although, you know, I put on here that, that we can arrange, you know, proper rooms for, for students, which is very important that they, they have a good night's sleep. Um, right. You know, they could be in good accommodation, but also it's also important to have some real fun where you're camping out for a couple of nights or, mm -hmm. or more, you know, to actually get in, in where you are, you know, and, and we all know how lovely breakfast is when you're camping. Oh you know? my gosh. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. A British breakfast <laughs> over a fire. Thing. Are oh, you exactly. kidding me? Oh my gosh. And tell everybody Ooh. what a British breakfast a oh. proper British breakfast. Proper, oh, proper British breakfast. You got sausage. You got proper sausages from a butcher. You got bacon. You got egg. You know, you got a bit mushrooms. of toast by the fire. Yeah, mushrooms, which you can probably pick in the forest if you know what you're looking for. I uh -oh. wouldn't suggest that. I wouldn't suggest. Yeah, that. be careful. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you know, there is nothing better than having a campfire breakfast. Nothing Ooh. better. Absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic. Oh, I love that. And sure. baked beans, baked beans yeah. over a campfire too. There's something, no. no and that's, you can a make cowboy. that's a cowboy breakfast. Come oh, on. You, go back to you the don't baked have baked apples and bacon. Come on. You've got to I, have don't baked have, I don't have baked beans for breakfast. No, just what about the baked beans. apples and bacon? Oh yeah, there together. you go. I knew that was coming. <laughs> yeah. I knew that was coming. See, yeah. and, and cheese scones can be any time. Oh yes, yeah. obviously. Apparently, oh. Priscilla, our pink sock monkey, doesn't do them quite as well as your wife. <laughs> yes. Sadly, sadly not. Oh, well. Oh, well. But I think this is exciting because there's so mm -hmm. many options. And one thing I do want 
people to do when they go to England, because it's different, is to get out on, go out on the coast, because the coast, it, there's, it is absolutely, it is just not the same. It isn't. You've no. got, unless you're from the Pacific mm -hmm. Northwest, I can kind of say it gets a little similar. Yeah. But England, I, it, you got to just have one of those days it's where you've got a black different. hole and you've got to get into the candy. Right? You know, oh, sorry. Here we I, go. I know I shouldn't be pushing candy, but the sweets of England. Mm -hmm. So different. Yeah. But we've, you know, so talking, many. About, talking about the coast, and one thing that I did, uh, did sort of just mention in in my article was the distances now you can mm. all see that birmingham if you look at the g in birmingham that is right in the middle of england but that is no more than three hours from the coast see mm -hmm. so you can get to the coast from anywhere in the country within three hours you know mm. so what people probably find difficult the same as I find difficult to think about the scale of America Americans probably find very difficult to think about the scale of England because we are so small mm -hmm, so it right. doesn't matter where you are you are not far from the coast mm -hmm. it doesn't matter where you are you're not far from anywhere else you know you can see London and you can see the red dot where I am I'm mm -hmm. only two and a half three hours from London so, you know, we're not far. I'm only like five hours, I suppose, four or five hours from Wales, which is right across the other side of the country. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm only, what, five hours by train to Edinburgh in Scotland. You know, wow. so, wow. so mm -hmm. we're not we're not far from anywhere. So if you if you come to England, mm -hmm. you can get anywhere within England, you know, quite easily and very quickly. Well, I know a lot of students also travel over for festivals and that's yeah. another whole thing too, like Glastonbury and, and yeah, all of yeah. that, that, yeah. you know, it's like, do your festival and at the beginning or end of your trip or in the middle, whatever, but have the other activities, you know, before or after the festival, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit like our previous um, chat about pleasure. <laughs> mm -hmm. We all love that word. By, by making <laughs> making the most of of your trip to England or your trip to anywhere mm -hmm. you know I don't, I don't mind where you're talking about going to but make the most of it so instead of just right. coming to England to come to a festival add another couple of days onto it and do something else or if mm -hmm. you're coming, if you're going to England on a business trip add another couple of days and do something that you're passionate about you know absolutely you know so mm -hmm. So it is all about the the pleasure idea. Mm -hmm. Just just add a couple of days onto whatever you're doing and make it more personal. Make it more about you rather yeah. than what you're doing. You know mm -hmm. that that's and we we it's all really do this true. thing where you know life is short. Yeah, man, seize the day. Seize the day while, especially when you're young and healthy. I can't. I you know do it while you're young and healthy. You never know. Mm -hmm. I've I've seen. People of all ages go through things oh, and go, waiting, I waiting, wish, waiting. I wish, I wish, I wish. Yes. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be one of those, you know, reflecting back going, I could have just, I mean, I remember once my uncles and, and a friend had tickets for mm -hmm. the Rolling Stones, right? And they were getting picked up by a limo and this whole thing, and I could have gone. And instead, I kept my day job working at the deli. And then I ended up quitting only a week later. I'm going, <laughs> are you kidding me? And I love the Rolling Stones. <laughs> I, and, you know, but I was trying to do the responsible thing, but it's the Rolling Bloody Stones. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, so I, to this day, I will, it'll never be the same. The Rolling no. Stones, it, it, I mean, it was the full, how, the full Monty there, you know? But this so is don't, how, don't be like me. <laughs> this is how Lisa and I ended up on the road yeah. permanently because we're so addicted to travel, which to me is a form of education, no matter oh, how you look at massive. it. Absolutely. Yeah, but it's a fun way of learning and it's a and it sticks with you because you're physically there. And there's it's just like when you go into a castle, you you're right, a film isn't gonna show you 
Yeah. It's not going to give you the feeling and a picture isn't going to do it. It, yeah. it can intrigue you and interest you. But until you actually go, like, oh, man, there's one place, um, Port Jesus, where you went into the dungeon, Lisa, in um, South Africa, Port Jesus. And you went downstairs into the dungeon where they used to jail people and you could see the hang where they hung mm. them on the wall and stuff. Yeah, that yeah. was, I mean, it was so creepy. There's seven, that, the, and, it's, ah. and I think, yeah. too, you know, when you go to places and I, and I, you know, when nowadays with like the war, we're like in Russia and Ukraine, mm. you look at this and it's become some are obsessed watching it what's going on on TV and, and obviously listening to Ukraine's president uh, speak, you know, every day, I think he's amazing that he really communicates. But if you haven't visited a battlefield or, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of graveyards or like Gettysburg here in the States. Wow. Um, yeah. It's very mm -hmm. easy to let TV become a numbing non-touchable like the war's not really happening thing you know it's happening it's terrible but how much do you really care when you haven't really felt that or it hasn't happened personally right or something personal in your own sphere yes and you haven't been to a place like that it's really hard to grasp the absolute overwhelming horror and terror of war Right. Yes. It, it really is. And I'm, yeah, not, I'm not saying that I want everyone to feel bad, but, you know, it's like if you go to where, you know, a prisoner of war camp, a concentration camp, but you go yeah. Auschwitz. Right. If you go to yeah. places mm -hmm. like that, no one's going to tell you the Holocaust didn't happen if you've been to yeah. Auschwitz. Right. I mean, how it, those are those people should go with the Flat Earth Society and, and, and make their own <laughs> island. But honestly, you won't understand until you step there. And have that feeling and that sadness is also what breeds empathy and compassion to do better things and have, I don't like the word tolerance, but to have more empathy and understanding amongst each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the one thing that um, this all touches and brings together is the fact that we've got several senses and mm -hmm. they they all need to be um, put into action for us to really appreciate something. Mm -hmm. So when when you're actually standing in a castle dungeon, not only have you got the sight of it, obviously, you've got the smell of it, which mm -hmm. even though there's no dead bodies in a dungeon, it's damp, mm -hmm. it's cold, it's... You know it's, they're there. It's smelly. Um, you've also got the feel of it because it's damp and you can feel it's damp. You know, you've got so many things. You've got the sounds of the, you know, different things. How the how the sounds reverberate around the walls, things like that. And also what you were just talking about. There's a graveyard just outside Cambridge at Maddingley, which is the U.S. Second World War graveyard, um, where most, not all, obviously, a lot of the U.S. servicemen who died during the Second World War and were brought back to England, a lot of them were buried in Cambridge at Maddingley. Oh, wow. So the US were, um, World War II graveyard is there. And you've got to go there to get that feeling, mm -hmm. to get yeah. the scale. Again, it's all about mm -hmm. scale. Mm -hmm. all about mm -hmm. how, how massive this area is. And they are all people who died during the war. And that's only a, a only a that much of the number of people who died, but it's a massive amount. And when we went, we went to France years and years ago with the children, and we were in Brittany, and we and and in Normandy, and we went to a couple of the World War II graveyards yeah. because I I feel it's important mm. for the children, and. Although we didn't make a big thing of it, we just went there and we showed them what they were and we told them about the battlefields and about the, the beaches in Normandy and mm. what happened. When we came home, we always asked the children what, what part of the holiday sort of stuck with them. And that is what stuck with them, mm -hmm. the graveyards. Wow. Because it was just such a realisation yeah. that all of these people 
from all over the all all different religions because there are there are Jewish gravestones, there are mm. American gravestones, there are British gravestones, there are German mm. gravestones. You know, to think that that was what they remembered most about their holiday, and we'd had fun as well, but that is but what's it, in their heads. We and went to. The Channel Islands between England and France, and yeah, yeah. release of visiting that hospital. Yeah, from world and and that the hospital was underground in the cliff. No. Yeah. Oh, and oh uh -uh. my god, it's not uh -uh. <laughs> no, but and but, water but still running down the sides where the beds are like moved out from the walls, but there's water dripping down the sides it's like many little waterfalls, and these people who were injured were. Put in these beds next to the dripping water. <laughs> mm -hmm. You've got uh, to think what it was like, you know. Yeah, to go through crazy. that and and even the medicine yeah. back then compared to what we have now. Mm -hmm. And go back to the graveyards too. When we went to Gettysburg, Nancy and I were just talking about this yesterday, mm -hmm. and um, about you know the Civil War. I mean, like Andersonville, mm -hmm. the the Civil War encampment was. I mean, it was like. It's like being in a prison in a swamp. It's, it, it was yeah. horrible. It, I mean, you're outdoors yeah. in tents. Um, yeah. But anyway, going back to Gettysburg, you know, we've done we've done all these radio shows with artists and residents with the National Parks Arts Foundation that had been there, and we interviewed rangers and the superintendent even. And you know, I th thought I knew this history well mm. until we went there, and. Um, yeah. I just kept looking at Nancy going and and I want I really actually there was it was during the pandemic but you know things were open again and people it would there was just flooded with people and was too I couldn't handle the amount of the people and the amount of like whoa all these people who fought including the native americans mm -hmm. they they had a whole mm -hmm. native american section yeah. And then the, the actual you know Gettysburg address and all you know that was just incredibly overwhelming and then we went to i mean there's parts that you drive it or you go on a horse you hike it i mean it's not small like what you're saying and then mm. we went into the cemetery and what really got her and i i mean was you see all the gravestones divided up like you're saying and then there was just this mass section of unmarked graves Unknown. just with an empty plaque and and or empty nobody whatever. knows a blank tomb you know blank stone tombstone so many people and, and so what do you do yeah what do you do with that apart. and it's like when you go to mass graveyards Crazy. you know it was like that and and so we, we we ended up just going to the picnic area and just sitting down with the birds and the squirrels because we had to come like it was just too much yeah you yeah. know but but, it, but, but again, it, I'm, i want to go back you, know? you wouldn't get that yeah. if you didn't visit you wouldn't exactly. get yeah. that you wouldn't get that connection you wouldn't get that emotion. You wouldn't get that feeling. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that is what field trips are all about, what this oh. is what, what visits are all about. And, mm -hmm. and it, it's so important that we get a lot of this when we're young, because then, then we're gonna learn, like you say, we're gonna learn. And, mm -hmm. and the best way to learn is to experience, because right. it's, exactly. it sticks in your head, because you mm -hmm. remember, what it's all about. I always, again, I remember when I used to go up the primary school, I used to take objects um, to talk to the children about, like, you know, I've got a wind up gramophone and things like that, you know. And mm -hmm. one of the children who's the same age as my daughter, so now he's what, 34? And I saw him when he was in his mid 20s. And he said, Oh, hello, Mr. Burroughs. He said, I remember when you came to school and showed us that wind up record player, you know, mm. because, because he'd experienced it, he'd heard right. it, seen how yeah. it worked, you know, and I think yeah. that is what it's all about, you know, mm -hmm. you remember things. Yeah, that's the yeah. quickest way, it, you know, you're going to write theses and do all these things, but it's the quickest way to learn is to go Definitely. and, and do is. it while you can do it while and you can don't let don't things get in the it. way. You don't get interrupted. Like if you're watching a, um, you can be watching the best movie ever, uh, a historic, you know, plot or whatever on television, and then here comes a commercial. I'm yeah. sorry, 
we just destroyed the whole so yeah. you, you know what i mean this is why we have whole mood. yeah but yeah yeah because even, and even then i mean the, the whole phone goes yeah. off i mean i don't care even if you yeah. go to the cinema how many people's phones go off during the movies you know oh that's Here so you funny, are so but... it's like i think we have this constant interruption and if you travel you're immersed in it and you're spending mm -hmm. money to do it so you might as well get the most out of it and I, right I, you can't you cannot put a dollar it's priceless you know they always say yeah. travel is priceless it, is. it gives it gives and it gives to you and the other mm -hmm. part of it is i think when when you go with a guide like yourself who takes you around and they have this connection with you they have a connection more to the area and the people then yeah. we tend to be better travelers. So we are giving back into the region as well because it can't just be one-sided. And so oh, yeah. I think you have a better connection than just being put in a hotel room, a typical hotel room, you know, the ones like you talk about, the cardboard Spitting ones. cardboard, yeah. Yeah, yeah, none of those. And no factory sausage. We want real sausage um, for breakfast. Um, no yeah. baked beans, uh, apparently. Um, yeah, but, not not yeah, for me. Not, not for, for me. Glenn. No, no, none of that for Glenn. But... When you have these oh, real experiences, funny. immerse yourself. But if you have those other kind, that's when it's not, you're not really connecting and that's not going to teach you anything. And you can go take your photo next to the London Tower. It's like every, you know, the oblig obligatory, <laughs> have I got the big word today? Obligatory that's a good word. Yeah, photo. Like that's a yeah. good word. Um, photos and put it on your Instagram. But if mm -hmm. you didn't really connect and someone says, oh, well, blah, blah, blah about it. And you have nothing to say other than, oh, I had to do it for Instagram. You've got to go beyond that. <laughs> you know, you might as well so, go to a to a to a studio. You know, for instance, you can go to yeah. the Harry Potter studios in oh, in America. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to see a medieval building, you can go to the Harry Potter studios in America and you can see a, a medieval building made out of spit and mm -hmm. cardboard. But if you actually want to go to a real medieval building, it's a completely mm -hmm. different feeling, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, it's mm -hmm. it's, all, it's all about what's real and what's not real. Oh, there mm -hmm. it is. I love it. Yeah, Lynn, always That's a good, good time. Did we stay on track today? I think we I think we did most. I of think them. did we did pretty good. I we think did we, good. Done right. we did good. Yeah, Everyone, again, good. Glenn's article is up on Blend Radio and TV.com. Just mm -hmm. type in Glenn, G-L-Y-N-N. -N. Uh, you'll see all kinds of interviews mm -hmm. and articles there. He's here every fourth Saturday, so keep up with us at BigBlendRadio.com and on Instagram. Why not? Uh, but also, the most important thing is to connect directly with Glenn. Go to Norfolk-Tours.co.uk and keep up with him there. Thank you so much, Glenn. Happy Thanks, travels. Glenn. I know you've got a busy couple of weeks. I, I have now. I'm doing a, a medieval buildings week and then I'm doing a family history week for some hotel people. So that'll be great fun. Getting out and awesome. about and doing some stuff. Awesome. awesome. Well, you take care and travel cool. safe. We will. See you later. Yeah.